عندي حساسية نبدا <تصفيق> الحمد ثم الحمد للرحمن متكررا يجري مدى الازمان ثم الصلاه مع السلام على الذي نزلت عليه هدايه الفرقان اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد إخوان الكرام أخوات الكريمات السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We praise Allah and we praise Allah again and we praise Allah repeatedly as long as time remains and may peace and salutations be upon the one who was sent with the guidance and the criterion our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon his family, companions and thereafter my noble brothers and my noble sisters Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Akhwani, Akhawati Mawdu'una al-yawm يتعلق بمعالجة سبب رئيس للفرقة والاختلاف فإن أول جريمة وقعت في بني البشر كان بسبب ما نتكلمه اليوم وكفر من كفر وضلال من ضل وفرقة من افترق في غالبه حسدا من عند أنفسهم فسيكون حديثنا إن شاء الله عن الحسد كعلاج لهذا الداء والبارحة تكلمنا عن الأسباب واليوم نتكلم عن العلاج كيف نعالج الحسد بمعرفة كنهه ومعرفة أسبابه ثم كيف نعالجه حتى ندفع هذا الداء العظيم الذي نسأل الله أن يجنبنا إياه Noble brothers and noble sisters Our lecture today is regarding the main cause of divisions and sectarianism and differing and how we cure ourselves from this disease and the first crime which was ever committed against humanity or within humanity its cause was that which we are going to talk about today those people who disbelieved in the majority of cases they only disbelieved and those people 
who were misguided, they were only misguided. And divisions which took place, they only took place in the, most, in most of, in the majority of cases because of that which we are going to talk about today. And that is al-hasad, envy and jealousy. And so our lecture is going to be based around this topic and this dangerous disease, jealousy and envy. And how we can protect ourselves or the cure against this dangerous disease. And yesterday we spoke about some of the causes which lead to differing and divisions. And today we are going to talk about the cure to divisions and sectarianism. And we will speak about hasad, envy and jealousy, so we can understand what is envy and jealousy, and what are the causes of envy and jealousy, and then what is the cure for envy and jealousy. Because this is a very dangerous disease. And we ask Allah subhanahu to protect us and you from it. والحسد يقوم على أمرين في تعريفه أول شيء أن تتمنى زوال النعمة من أخيك ثم أن تنتقل لك فالحسد أن تتمنى زوال نعمة من أخيك ثم تنتقل لك هذا تعريفها وقد عرف العلماء الحسد تعريفات عدة لكن لكن هذا هو الحسد ويقابله أنواع وأقسام سنتكلم عنها إن شاء الله لاحقا مثلا الغبطة من الحسد الجائز حسد الغبطة وهذا سنتكلم عنه إن شاء الله لاحقا لكن ما هو أن تتمنى ما عند أخيك عندك من خير كأن يكون غنيا ينفق فتتمنى أن يكون عندك ما عنده من مال كي تنفق دون أن تتمنى زوال ذلك منه والنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول لا حسد إلا في اثنتين وهذا يسمى بحسد الغبط رجل آتاه الله مالا فهو ينفقه آناء الليل وأطراف النهار ورجل آتاه الله الحكمة أي العلم فهو يقضي بها ويعلمها هذا الذي يحسد ويسمى بالغبطة وما سوى ذاك فهو البلاء نسأل الله السلامة والمعافاة and when it comes to understanding al-hasad, jealousy and envy, the definition of hasad is based upon two matters. Firstly, for you to desire this blessing which somebody else has, that this blessing, is, this blessing is taken away from that person. And then secondly, that you desire for that blessing to be bestowed upon you. And the ulama they have various definitions of al-hasad. However, they agree upon these two points. That hasad is firstly for that blessing to be removed from your brother. And then secondly, for you to be bestowed with that blessing. And then there are other types of hasad which are permitted. And we will speak about them shortly. And from those types of hasad which are permitted is al-ghibta. And al-ghibta which we'll, we will talk about shortly is when you see your brother has been blessed with something and you desire for yourself to be bestowed with the same blessing without it being removed from him. And this is what is permitted Islamically. And in the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, he said that there is no jealousy except in two matters. 
And this type of jealousy which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam permitted, this is known as Hasadul Ghibta. And then he said, a man who has been bestowed with a blessing of wealth and, he, and so he spends it in charity night and day. And another person who has been given hikmah and the intended meaning behind hikmah here is knowledge. And, and so he judges based upon that knowledge and he teaches knowledge to others. So this type of jealousy or having jealousy over such matters is that which is permitted. And any other type of jealousy aside from this is a calamity and a trial upon a person. We ask Allah for safety and pardoning. وقد جاء ذم الحسد في كتاب الله وفي سنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وسنذكر شيئا مما جاء في كتاب الله وفي سنة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لأن النصوص كثيرة في هذا الذم ونحن نعلم أننا نتكلم عن داء الأمم داء الأمم الحسد الذي كانت فيه أول جريمة حينما قتل أحد ابني آدم أخاه قال لأقتلنك قال إنما يتقبل الله من المتقين حسده أنه تقبل منه من أخيه ولم يتقبل منه فقتله لئن بسطت إلي يدك لتقتلني ما أنا بباسط يدي إليك لأقتلك إني أخاف الله رب العالمين فطوعت له نفسه قتل أخيه فقتله لما قتله إنه الحسد فكانت أول جريمة بسبب الحسد وهي داء الأمم نسأل الله السلامة والمعافاة وقد جاءت سورة كاملة في كتاب الله تتكلم عن الحسد وهي من المعوذات قال الله عز وجل قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا وقب ومن شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد يقول الحسين بن الفضل إن الله جمع الشرور في هذه الآية وختمها بالحسد ليعلم أنه أخص الطبائع ليعلم أنه أخص الطبائع And al-hasad has been rebuked and censored and dispraised in the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam in many ayat and many ahadith and we will mention some of those ayat and ahadith because there are many many texts and proofs which rebuke hasad and hasad is the disease which afflicted the nations who came before us and due to hasad the first crime was committed amongst humans and that is that one of the sons of Adam he killed his brother based upon hasad based upon jealousy and this is why he said that I will kill you and why did he want to kill him only because of jealousy because the other brother he said to him verily Allah only accepts from the pious and so Allah accepted from him and the other brother became jealous because Allah did not accept from him and so he ended up killing him because of what jealousy and Allah subhanahu mentions this in the Quran why or how he killed him and one brother said to the other that if you do stretch your hand against me to kill to kill me I shall never stretch my hand against you to kill you why for I fear Allah the Lord of the worlds and so his jealousy over the fact that Allah accepted from his brother and did not accept from him caused him to kill him and this was the first crime which existed 
or was committed throughout humanity, all because of Hasid. And in the Quran, Allah Subhana, He revealed a complete surah in which He mentioned jealousy. And this surah which He revealed is from the Mu'awwidat, and that is Surah Al Falaq, in which Allah Subhana He mentions jealousy and the evil of jealousy. And he said, Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq. Say, I seek refuge with the Lord of Al-Falaq, i.e. the break of dawn or daybreak. Min sharri ma khalaq, from the evil of that which he has created. Wa min sharri ghasiqin idha waqab. And from the evil that occurs in darkness, when the darkness settles. And from the evil of those who blow in their knots. And then in the last ayah, he said, وَمِن شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حسد. And from the evil of those who show jealousy when they become jealous. And Hussein ibn Fadl, he said regarding this surah that verily Allah mentioned the various types of evil throughout these ayat. And then he ended this surah by mentioning hasad to show us that the most repulsive trait is jealousy. ومن الآيات في كتاب ربنا فيما يتعلق بالحسد يقول الله سبحانه ود كثير من أهل الكتاب لو يردونكم من بعد إيمانكم كفارا حسدا من عند أنفسهم من بعد ما تبين لهم الحق يقول ابن عثيمين رحمه الله والآية تدل على تحريم الحسد لأن مشابهة الكفار بأخلاقهم محرمة والحاسد لا يزداد بحسده إلا نارا تتلظى في جوفه وانتبهوا إلى ما يقول قال وكلما ازدادت نعمة الله على عباده ازداد حسرة فهو مع كونه كارها لنعمة الله على هذا الغير مضاد لله في حكمه لأنه يكره أن ينعم الله على هذا المحسود ثم إن الحاسد أو الحسود مهما أعطاه الله من نعمة لا يرى لله فضلا فيها لأنه لا بد أن يرى في غيره نعمة أكثر مما أنعم الله به عليه فيحتقر النعمة Um, hopefully it's going to be the last time I'm going to be announced for cars here in Ikhwania. Alhamdulillah, we had the three days passing everything okay. There's a car with a registration, GF54LVC, and it's a Toyota. If somebody's blocking the entrance. Is somebody there? I'm going to find him for the masjid, inshallah. <laughs> And Allah subhana He mentioned Hasad, jealousy and envy In the Quran And that this was from the traits of Ahlul Kitab, the people of the scriptures He said Many amongst Ahlul Kitab They desire That you return back From your Iman To disbelief 
hasadan min indi anfusihim due to envy and jealousy which is within them and a sheikh ibn uthaymin rahimullah he mentioned in the tafsir of this ayah that this ayah it proves to us the prohibition of jealousy because it is a trait which is found within the non-muslims and it is haram for a person to imitate the non-muslims and that the hasid the one who has within him jealousy and envy he only increases in the fire which engulfs his insides and pay attention to this ibn uthaymin said and each time the blessing of allah increases upon the people then this person he increases in his destruction because of jealousy which is found within him and at the same time whilst he hates for the blessing of allah to be found within somebody else he is opposing the wisdom of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why because he hates that allah is blessing somebody else with this blessing and then in addition to this this person never considers the or never appreciates the fadl the kindness of allah because whenever he is bestowed with a blessing he always belittles that blessing and he always thinks that the others who are around him have been given a greater blessing and so he belittles the blessings which allah bestows upon him ومن الايات ومن الايات الوارده في ذنب الحسد قول الله سبحانه وتعالى ام يحسدون الناس على ما اتاهم الله من فضله فقد اتينا ال ابراهيم الكتاب والحكمه واتيناهم ملكا عظيما يقول القرطبي وهذا هو الحسد بعينه الذي ذمه الله تبارك وتعالى and from those ayat in which allah subhanahu he rebukes and censures hasad envy and jealousy is he saying or do they envy men to whom allah has blessed from his fadl from his kindness and his grace and verily we gave ali ibrahim the book and al hikma and we bestowed upon them a great kingdom al qurtubi rahimullah mentioned that this is the very definition of jealousy which allah rebukes wa min al ayat wa hiya akhir ayatin wa la nazid لأن الآيات كثيرة يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في ذنب الحسد ولا تتمنوا ما فضل الله به بعضكم على بعض للرجال نصيب مما اكتسبوا وللنساء نصيب مما اكتسبن واسألوا الله من فضله إن الله كان بكل شيء عليما يقول القرطبي رحمه الله والحسد مذموم وصاحبه مغموم وهو ياكل الحسنات كما تاكل النار الحطب ويقال الحسد اول ذنب عصي الله به في السماء واول ذنب عصي به في الارض فاما في السماء فحسد ابليس لادم واما في الارض فحسد قابيل لهابيل هذا كلام القرطبي رحمه الله and also from those ayat which allah mentioned regarding al hasad and this is the last ayah which we will mention because there are many ayat is the saying of allah the meaning of which is and do not wish for that which allah has made some exceed over others for men is a share of what they have earned and for women is a share of what they have earned and ask allah from his kindness and allah is all knowing and al qurtubi rahimullah he mentioned that this ayah shows 
that hasad, envy and, jealous, uh, envy and jealousy, it has been rebuked and dispraised. And also the one who is jealous and envious, he has also been rebuked and dispraised. And this is because jealousy, it eats up and it consumes good deeds. Just as a fire, it consumes or it, or, or it burns wood. And it has been said that jealousy was the first sin through which Allah was disobeyed in the heavens and upon the earth. As for it being the first sin by which Allah was disobeyed in the heavens, then because of Iblis, when he refused to prostrate in front of Adam. And as for it being the first sin by which Allah was disobeyed upon the earth, then because of Qabil and his killing of his brother Habil. وجاء الحسد ذمه في سنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كما في الحديث المتفق عليه عن أنس بن مالك رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تباغضوا ولا تحاسدوا ولا تدابروا وكونوا عباد الله إخوانا يقول ابن بطال رحمه الله وفيه أي من فوائد هذا الحديث النهي عن الحسد على النعم أن ترى أخاك قد ركب سيارة جديدة أو لبس ثوبا جديدا أو تزوج زوجة جميلة أو زوجة غنية إلى آخره أو أنعم الله عليه بتجارة وغير ذلك من النعم الكثيرة أو اشترى بيتا أو مزرعة فالنهي عن الحسد على النعم ونعم الله كثيرة بل بعض الناس وهذا من عجائب الحسد بعض الناس يحسد كبار السن أنهم يمشون على أرجلهم يريد منهم أن يكونوا مقعدين نسأل الله السلامة والمعافاة يقول ابن بطال وفيه النهي عن الحسد على النعم وقد نهى الله عباده المؤمنين أن يتمنوا ما فضل الله به بعضهم على بعض وأمرهم أن يسألوه من فضله إخواني أخواتي الله سبحانه وتعالى لم يعطي الدنيا لأحد قط أي ما تمم عليه الدنيا فأنعم عليه من جميع جوانبها فقد يعطيه مالا يحرمه العافية وقد يعطيه العافية ويحرمه المال وقد يعطيه المال والعافية ويحرمه الولد وقد يعطيه ولدا لكنه يشيبه قبل المشيب وقد يعطيه زوجة لكن تريه نجوم الظهر وقد وقد أسباب كثيرة النعم لا تكتفي ولا يمكن وهذه كما قال علماؤنا من نعم الله أن الله ينغص على عبده في بعض دنياه كي يتذكر أخراه ولو أنه أنعم عليه في دنياه من جميع جوانبه لنسي الله ونسي الآخرة ونسي الجنة لكنه يبتلى وأنا أعرف أناسا أثرياء أغنياء عندهم من متع الدنيا الشيء الكثير لكنهم حرموا من أمور لا يحرم منها أقل الفقراء بعضهم وأنا أعرفهم حرم من مادة القمح كل شيء فيه مادة الخبز أو القمح ممنوع أن يأكله وهو ثري غني كل الفقراء يأكلون خبزا وهذا الثري لا يأكل خبزا هذا قدر الله يقدره كيف يشاء فإذا أنعم الله عليك فاشكر الله واحمده ودعك من النظر إلى الآخرين فالله أعطاك 
أمورا حرم منها غيرك وأعطى غيرك حرمك حرم منك بعضها وكله بتقدير الله And also there are a hadith from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the dispraise of Hasad. Like the hadith in Sahih Bukhari in Muslim, narrated by Anas ibn Malik radiallahu an, that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Do not hate each other, and do not envy each other, and do not cut off from each other, rather be towards each other as brothers. And Ibn Battal, rahimahullah, he said that from the benefits of this hadith is that Allah has forbidden us from showing envy and jealousy based upon blessings which he has bestowed upon the people. Any blessing and every type of blessing. You see your brother and he is riding a good car or you become jealous of him because of his clothing. Or because he has married a woman who is beautiful. Or a woman who is wealthy. Or he has a business which is successful. Or that he is living in a house which is spacious. Or a farm. And there is a lot of, pro there's a lot of produce in this farm. Or any other blessing. And the blessings of Allah are many. And from the strange matters regarding those people who are jealous is that some of them may even be jealous regarding an old person who is still able to walk and he desires for that person who is old that he should be pushed around in a wheelchair and so his jealousy extends to the old person the fact that he is still able to walk so Ibn Battal he said that verily this hadith it contains the prohibition against showing jealousy. And Allah has warned His believing worshippers that they desire that which somebody else has been bestowed with. But instead, they should ask Allah from His fadl, from His generosity, kindness and His grace. And so, noble brother and noble sister, Allah subhana never gave one person every blessing in the dunya. Meaning, no one person was blessed with every type of ni'mah, worldly blessing. Rather, somebody is given something and is prevented from something else. So you find a person, he has been blessed with wealth, and he has not been blessed with good health. And you find another person who is blessed with good health. But he does, not have, he does not have wealth. You find another person who has been blessed with wealth and good health. But he does not have a child. You find a person who has wealth and good health and a child. However, that child causes him to age before he becomes old. You find a person whom Allah has blessed with a wife. You may find a person who has been bestowed with uh, marrying a woman, a wife, and this wife, she makes him see stars in the day. <laughs> and because of so many problems that she causes him, he sings stars in, in the daytime. You know, like in cartoons when the stars... <laughs> Now, and sometimes it may be the husband <laughs> who is causing this upon the wife. And the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in never bestowing upon a person every type of ni'mah is that so this person remembers the akhirah. 
So had Allah bestowed upon a person every type of blessing, then this would lead him to forget Allah and forget the Akhirah and forget Jannah. And so Allah tests the people with certain types of ni'm and being prevented from other types of ni'm. And I personally, I know people who are rich and wealthy and they have many possessions and much wealth and yet they have been prevented from certain matters that the poor are not prevented from. I personally know very rich people and they are not able to eat wheat, wheat which is contained in bread. And so this person who is so rich, he cannot eat that which every poor person eats, i.e. Uh, bread or wheat. And if he ate bread or wheat, it would harm him. And so, noble brother and sister, thank Allah and show him shukr from that for that which he has given you. And do not look towards that which he has given other people. Because Allah has given you certain matters and he has prevented you from other matters. And Allah subhanahu has given that person certain matters and he has prevented him from certain matters. And all of this is by the, the qadr of Allah, by the decree of Allah. ومن الأحاديث ما ذكرته قبل قليل من حديث عبد الله بن مسعود المتفق عليه يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا حسد إلا في اثنتين رجل ويجوز أن تقول رجل آتاه الله مالا فسلطه على هلكته في الحق ورجل آتاه الله الحكمة فهو يقضي بها ويعلمها يقول النووي رحمه الله قال العلماء الحسد قسما حقيقي ومجازي فالحقيقي تمني زوال النعمة عن صاحبها وهذا حرام بإجماع الأمة مع النصوص الصحيحة وأما المجازي فهو الغبطة وهو أن يتمنى مثل النعمة التي على غيره من غير زوالها عن صاحبها فإن كانت من أمور الدنيا أي هذه الغبطة كانت مباحة وإن كانت طاعة كالعلم والنفقة في سبيل الله وغير ذلك فهي مستحبة والمراد بالحديث ولا زال الكلام للنووي رحمه الله والمراد بالحديث لا غبطة محبوبة إلا في هاتين الخصلتين وما في معناهما قوله عليه الصلاة والسلام كما ترون في هذا الحديث and also from those ahadith which, which we mentioned previously is the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud رضي الله عنه which is in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim. That the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there is no hasad which is permitted except in two matters. A man, and you can say rajulun or rajulin. Linguistically, both are correct. A man who has, who has been bestowed with wealth. And so he spends this wealth in that which is correct. Or a man who has been given wisdom, hikmah, i.e. knowledge. And so he acts upon this knowledge and he teaches this knowledge to others. And an nawawi rahimahullah, he said when explaining this hadith, that the ulama have said that hasad is two types. Hasad which is real and hasad which is symbolic. So the hasad which is real is when a person desires the blessing which somebody else has been given and he wants for that blessing to be taken away from that person. And this is haram by ijma of the ummah along with the many evidences and proofs which have been mentioned. And then the type of hasad which is permitted which is in meaning or symbolic or metaphoric, metaphorical 
is when a person desires a blessing which somebody else has been bestowed with, but he's not, he does not desire for that blessing to be removed from that person. And this can be either in materialistic blessings or that which pertains to the akhirah or the religion. So if you desire a, a ni'mah which is materialistic without desiring for it to be taken from somebody else from the dunya related matters then this is mubah. This is something which is permitted. And if it is something which relates to the akhirah or to the religion, some form of ta'a, obedience to Allah, and a good deed, or knowledge, or charity, or whatever is similar to this in meaning, then this is something which is encouraged. It is mustahab. And the meaning of this is, and this speech is still from an nawawi the meaning of this hadith is that there is no type of hasad which is actually beloved to Allah, mahbuba in Allah, which is beloved to Allah and encouraged, except in these two matters, i.e. wealth, which is spent in charity or knowledge, and that which is similar to it in meaning. وأما أقوال سلفنا وعلمائنا فكثير كثير في هذا الباب وأقتطف لكم بعضها من ذلك قول معاوية رضي الله عنه عنهما قال كل الناس اسمعوا لهذا الكلام وكان معاوية خليفة وهو شعر بهذا قال شعر بهذا لأنه خليفة قال كل الناس أستطيع أن أرضيه إلا حاسد نعمة فإنه لا يرضيه إلا زوالها الله مهما صنعت له مهما قدمت له مهما أحسنت له لا يرضيه إلا أن تكون في القبر وقال ابن سيرين محمد بن سيرين التابع الجليل ما حسدت أحدا على شيء من أمر الدنيا لأنه إن كان من أهل الجنة فكيف أحسده على الدنيا وهي حقيرة في الجنة وإن كان من أهل النار فكيف أحسده على أمر الدنيا وهو يصير إلى النار وقال الحسن البصري ويا له من قول ما رأيت ظالما أشبه بمظلوم من حاسد هو ظالم لكنه ظلم نفسه نفس دائم أي حسد دائم وحزن لازم وغم لا ينفد فابتلي الحاسد بهذا البلاء نسأل الله السلامة والمعافة And as for the statements of the Salaf and our great Imams they are many, many in number and I have chosen some for you Muawiyah May Allah be pleased with both of them. He said, and pay attention to the statement of Muawiyah radiallahu anhuma. And he was the Khalifa of the Muslims. And he said this statement and he felt or appreciated the meaning of this statement. He said, every person I am able to please except the Hasid, the one who is envious and jealous over the Ni'mah. Because he will only be pleased when this, blessing is, when this blessing is taken away from you. Meaning, whatever you do for that person, and whatever you give that person, and whatever you place in front of that person, he will, be, he will only be pleased, or he will only be pleased when you are in your grave. And Ibn Sirin 
Muhammad ibn Sirin, the great Imam, he said, I have never been envious towards a person over something from the dunya. Because if he is from the people of paradise, then how can I be envious over a matter of the dunya and this matter is nothing in comparison to paradise. And if he is from the people of the fire, then how can I be jealous over something from the dunya and this person, his final abode is in the fire. And Al-Hasan Al-Basari, the great Tabi'i, and how beautiful a statement he made. He said, I have never seen a person who is a zalim, he is the oppressor, and he himself is oppressed. Meaning, this envious person, and he is doing wrong against others, he is also wronging his own self. Because his jealousy continues, and he's always in a state of anxiety and uh, worry. And his worry, it never ceases. وَيَقُولُ أَبُوْ اللَّيْثِ السَّمَرْخَنْدِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ يَصِلُ الْحَاسِدُ أَوْ يَصِلُ إِلَى الْحَاسِدِ خَمْسُ عُقُوبَاتِ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَصِلَ جَسَدُهُ إِلَى الْمَحْسُودِ أو حسده قبل أن يصل حسده إلى المحسود أولاها غم لا ينقطع الحسود مغموم مغموم وإن رأيته يضحك وإن رأيته يبتسم لكنه من الداخل يحذر فهو نفسه مغموم الثانية مصيبة لا يؤجر عليها لأنه قد لبس نفسه بمصيبة دون أجر الثالثة مذمة لا يحمد عليها الرابعة سخط الرب الله يسخط على الحاسد الخامسة يغلق عنه باب التوفيق أخوه فتح مركزا لتحفيظ القرآن كيف فلان فتح مركز لتحفيظ القرآن لا بد أن أفتح مركزا أخذ تلاميذه أخذ نشاطه أخذ أخذ هل ترون من يدخل بهذه النفسية ولو في تحفيظ القرآن وهو أشرف عمل من دخل بهذه النفسية هل يوفق؟ والله لا يوفق لا مشكلة افتح دار القرآن لكن تحكى من غيرك تحكى من غيرك والموفق من وفقه الله والمسدد من سدده الله يريد أن يسيطر على المنطقة كلها بإحراق غيره وهو في الحقيقة يحرق نفسه نسأل الله السلامة والمعافاة وكم نرى هذا كثيرا بين صغار الدعاة للأسف والمبتدئين وقد ظن نفسه ولا زال في الشبر الأول من العلم ظن نفسه قد بلغ الغاية وهو بعد لم يتجاوز بدايات الشبر الأول ولذلك قال بعض علمائنا العلم ثلاثة أشبار فإن دخل في الأول ظن أنه أعلم الناس وإن دخل في الشبر الثاني أي ازداد علما ظن أنه جاهل وإذا دخل في الشبر الثالث بلغ في العلم الكثير ظن أنه أجهل الناس فكلما ازداد علما ازداد علما بجهله والمشكلة بأبي شبر هذا وقد علمته نظم القوافي فكانت أول قافية أنهج شيخه فلما قال قافية رماني علمه الرماية فكان أول سهم يضرب به شيخه حسدا من عند أنفسهم
نسأل الله السلامة والمعافاة وقد ابتليت الأمة بهذا في جميع أسقاعها And Abu Layth al samarqandi he mentioned that a person who has envy and jealousy, he will be punished with five different types of punishments before his jealousy ever reaches the person over whom he is jealous and envious. He said the first of these five punishments is gham, anxiety and grief and worries which never cease. So this person who is jealous and envious, he will be in a constant state of anxiousness and anxiety and worry. Even if you see this person smiling and laughing, but within him, he is burning up. And the second punishment is that he has tested his own self. He has trialed his own self with a calamity for which there is no reward. Because he is the one who bought this calamity upon his own self and there is no reward for it. Third, that such a person is dispraised and there is no praise for him. Fourth, the anger of Allah the wrath of Allah upon him. And fifth, that the door of success and tawfiq is closed. You see your brother and he has opened a Quran school and then you show him envy and you become jealous over him. Why is it that he has been successful in opening a Quran school? And so you open a Quran school out of your envy and jealousy towards him and you want to steal his students from him and you try to compete with him in his activities this person who opens a Quran school with this intention even though the opening of a school in teaching Quran is from the most noble projects and from the most honorable institutes but do you think that this person will have any success? And he opened it with this intention. By Allah, this person will never be successful. There is no problem in you opening a school to teach the Quran. But do it without jealousy and without envy. And if you do it with envy and jealousy, then know that you will never be successful. He wants to gain fame over everybody and control everything. And in reality, and he wants to burn everybody else. But in reality, he's only burning his own self. And this is something we see in many young students of knowledge. This person who thinks that he has attained much in knowledge. And he has not even taken the first step or the first hand span of knowledge. And this is why our ulama, they used to say that knowledge is three. Or there are three stages or three steps or three hand spans when it comes to knowledge. The first step is when a person gains a small amount of knowledge and he thinks that he's the most knowledgeable amongst the people. And the second step or the second stage or the second hand span is when he increases in his knowledge and he realizes his own ignorance. He appreciates his own, his own ignorance. And then the third step is when he attains a lot of knowledge. And then he realizes that he's the most ignorant of people. And so each time a person increases in his knowledge, he increases in realizing and appreciating his own ignorance. والشيخ الحق ذكرتم عالم شيخ علم تلميذه نعم وقد علمته نظم القوافي 
فلما قال قافية هجاني وعلمته الرماية هذه الرماية أول سهم أطلقه رماه بشيخه ولشيخه And as one of the poets said that I taught him meaning I taught my student poetry and the first verse he wrote was against me and I taught him archery and the first arrow he fired was at his own sheikh out of jealousy ما اثار الحسد وانا تجاوزت كلام السلف كثيرا الكلام كثير لكن اختصر ما اثار الحسد يقول علماؤنا الحسد مذموم مرذول يقول الماوردي رحمه الله ولو لم يكن من ذم الحسد إلا أنه خلق دني يتوجه نحو الأكفاء والأقارب الأكفاء أي الأقوياء ويختص بالمخالط والمصاحب لكانت النزاهة عنه كرما والسلامة منه مغنما فكيف وهو بالنفس مضر وعلى الهم مصر حتى ربما أفضى بصاحبه إلى التلف من غير نكاية في عدو ولا إضرار بحسود ثم ذكر للحسد أربع مساوئ فقال نذكرها بعد الترجمة إن شاء الله As for, as for the evil effects of hasad and I have not mentioned many many statements of the salaf because of how many there are in number then hasad It is something which is lowly and dispraised. And Al-Mawardi mentioned regarding Hasad that if there was nothing said regarding Al-Hasad except that it is a very repulsive trait or a very low, lowly trait, this would be sufficient in the rebuke of Al-Hasad. نعم شيخ اشرح لي يتوجه نحو الاكفاء يعني نحو توجه يعني يذهب الحسده يذهب الى الاكفاء يعني يحسد حسد it causes a person to be jealous over those who are stronger than him ويختص بالمخالط والمصاحب And in addition to this, the one who is jealous, he is also jealous of those who are around him and those who he socializes with. And if this was the only uh, point of rebuke when it comes to jealousy, then a person removing from himself this trait of jealousy would be honorable and being saved from jealousy would be a great benefit and how when in addition to that which has been mentioned jealousy it harms a person and it places a person in constant grief and anxiety and perhaps it leads that person to become lost and misguided And then he mentioned after this four further uh, evil traits or effects of jealousy which we will mention. الأول من ذلك من آثار ومساوئ الحسد أن الحسد حسرات على الجسد وسقام أي يمرض الجسد فهو حسرات الحسد وسقام الجسد ثم لا يجد لحسرته انتهاء ولا يؤمل لسقامه شفاء ولذلك قال ابن المعتز 
الحسد داء الجسد أي يقتل نفسه قبل غيره الثاني انخفاض المنزلة عندنا في العرب نقول الحسود لا يسود الحسود لا يسود حتى لو بلغ وبلغ لكنه حقود وغير محبوب الأمر الثالث أن الناس تمقته لأن الحب من من الله فمقت الناس له حتى لا يجد فيهم محبا حتى لو بذل جهده أن يحبوه فالقلوب بيد الله والحسود غير محبوب الرابعة لو لم يكن إلا هذه لكفت أنه يسخط ربه فإسخاط الله تعالى في معارضته واجتناء الأوزار في مخالفته إذ إن الحسود يرى لا يرى قضاء الله عدلا ولا لنعمه من الناس أهلا ولذلك أول كلمة عندنا في العرب أمثلة يقولون يعطي الحلق لمن ليس له آذان ويعطي الفولة لمن ليس له أسنان تعرفها استرجم هذه أمثلة هذا اعتراض على قدر الله فالحسود أول ما يكون لو أنه رضي بنعمة الله هل يقول هذا الكلام؟ أبدا فيعترض على الله ولذلك الحسود هو يعترض على الله لذلك يسخط الله نسأل الله السلامة والمعافاة We mentioned that uh, hasad, envy and jealousy, it has four terrible effects. The first of the four is that it is only sorrow. It only causes sorrow for the one who is jealous and it causes an illness or disease for his body. And there is no ending to his sorrow, i.e. the one who is jealous. And there is no cure for the illness which it causes to the body of this jealous person. And Ibn al-Mu'iz, Ibn al-Mu'taz, Ibn al-Mu'taz, he said that hasad is a disease which kills the body. Meaning this person who is jealous, he is harming his own self before he harms anybody else. And then secondly, that jealousy, it causes a person to lose his status and to become belittled. And this is why we say, it's an Arabic proverb, that the jealous person will never become a leader. Or the jealous person is never taken as a model or an example. Regardless of how much he attains and how much he attains. But this jealous person, he remains hated amongst the people. The people, they hate him. And this is the third evil effect of jealousy. That the people hate the person who is jealous. To the extent that he does not find anybody amongst the people who respects him or adores him and every person is showing him animosity why because love is from Allah it is Allah who decrees for a person to be beloved amongst other people and so this jealous person as much as he tries to get people to love him he does not find a person who loves him because of his jealousy and this is because the hearts are in the hands of Allah Azza wa Jal. And then the fourth evil effect of jealousy, and this one would be sufficient, is that this person, 
is inviting the anger and the wrath of Allah upon himself because he's contending against Allah. Because he does not consider the decree of Allah to be just. And he does not consider for anybody to be deserving of the blessing of Allah. Huh? A fool nuts. Yeah. Yeah. The Sheikh is basically saying, is saying that we say it in Jordan and some Muslim countries as well, the Arab countries, that these people out of envy, they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God forbid, of course, gives the fool, which is the check piece, which is hard, to somebody who's got no teeth. I mean, it's supposed to be given to somebody who's got teeth to crack it. And gives the earrings to the person who's got no ears. It's supposed to give it to the one who's got ears. I mean, there's no justice. A'udhu billah. Now, meaning this person who is jealous and makes these types of statements, he is opposing the decree of Allah and he's opposing the wisdom of Allah. And had this jealous person been accepting and pleased, and pleased by the decree of Allah and the wisdom of Allah, would he make such statements? ما أسباب كثرة وقوع الكثير من الناس في الحسد لماذا كثير من الناس يحسد بعضهم بعضا هذه أسئلة هذا السؤال أجاب عنه بعض العلماء وسأختار الإمام الغزالي حيث فصل ذلك في الإحياء وذكر سبعة أمور في أسباب الحسد أما السبب الأول فالعداوة والبغضاء يقول فيها وهذا أشد أسباب الحسد فإن من آذاه شخص بسبب من الأسباب وخالفه في غرض بوجه من الوجوه أبغضه قلبه وغضب عليه ورسخ في نفسه الحقد والحقد يقتضي التشفي والانتقام فإن عجز تمنى أن تزول عنه النعم نسأل الله السلامة والمعافاة And then we come to a, an important question and that is regarding why so many people have jealousy towards others and this is a long difficult question which the ulama have given many answers to and from the answers of the ulama I've chosen the statement of Al-Imam Al-Ghazali in Al-Ihya and he mentioned that there are seven causes for jealousy i.e. seven causes which bring about envy and jealousy amongst the people he said the first of these seven causes, and this is the most severe, is because of animosity between, between each other and hatred between each other. So you find a person and he has been wronged by another person or harmed by another person or somebody has opposed him in a matter. And so now this person feels hatred towards that person in his heart. And this hatred, it leads to spite and malice. And then because of this spite and malice, he wants to seek revenge. And if he's unable to seek revenge, then he desires for blessings to be removed from that person. الأمر الثاني, السبب الثاني, التعزز. ومعنى التعزز, كما يقول الغزالي, وهو أن يثقل عليه أن يثقل عليه أن يترفع عليه غيره فإذا أصاب بعض أمثاله ولاية أو علما أو مالا خاف أن يتكبر عليه وهو لا يطيق تكبره فحين ذاك يحسده الأمر الثالث أو السبب الثالث وأنا أختصر 
الكبر الكبر وهو أن يكون في طبعه أن يتكبر عليه وأن يستصغره وأن يستخدمه وأن يتوقع منه الانقياد فإذا نال هذا الذي يتكبر عليه نعمة حسده بسبب كبره And then the second cause for hasad is at-ta'azzuz. And the meaning of at-ta'azzuz is that he has within him this inferiority complex. He has within him this inferiority complex that he fears somebody to rise above him. And so, if he finds another person, and that person has attained some authority, or some knowledge, or some wealth, then he fears that that person will rise above him, or have a status which is higher than him. And that he isn't able to rise above that person. And then because he's unable to bear this feeling, then this leads him to jealousy. And then the third, call, the third reason, and I am summarizing, is al-kibr, arrogance, pride, and haughtiness. So this person, he has a feeling of arrogance towards another person. He wants that person to remain belittled. He wants to exploit that person. He wants that person to abide by that which he says and does. And so, if he sees that person has been blessed with a ni'mah, then he becomes jealous over him. And this is due to the kibr, the pride and arrogance and the haughtiness which he has within him. وَأَمَّا السَّبَبُ الرَّابِعُ مِنْ أَسْبَابِ الْحَسَدِ فيما ذكره الغزالي فهو التعجب فيجزع الحاسد من أن يتفضل عليه من هو مثله في الخلقة لا عن قصد تكبر وطلب رياسة وتقدم عداوة أو سبب آخر من سائر الأسباب And then the fourth reason and this is also from the causes that Al-Ghazali mentioned, is a ta'ajjub, that he's self-amazed. And so, he does not like it when somebody else has a virtue over him, and that person is equal to him. And this is not because that person has arrogance within him, because he intends authority or status, or because he, he is an enemy towards that person, but it is because he is self-amazed by his own self. وَأَمَّا السَّبَبُ الْخَامِسِ فِيمَا ذَكَرَهُ فَهُوَ الْخَوْفُ مِنْ فَوَاتِ الْمَقَاصِدِ وَذَلِكَ يَخْتَصُّ بِمُتَزَاحِمِينَ عَلَى مَقْصُودٍ وَاحِدٍ يعني طلبة علم يتنافسون في العلم فيتنافسون من الأول على الدفعة من الأول فيحسد بعضهم بعضا أصحاب صناعة معينة أصحاب تجارة معينة يتزاحمون سواء على دنيا أو على عمل آخرة السبب السادس حب الرياسة وطلب الجاه وهذه هذه 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 يريد أن يصبح رأسا كيف يصبح رأسا أن يقصف بقية الرؤوس حتى يبقى الرأس الوحيد مسكين يبكى عليه يبكى عليه أنا أضرب مثالا يا إخواني واسمعوا هذا المثال لو أن بنيانا لو أن بنيانا طويلا من عشرين طابق 
وبجانبه بنيان من ثلاثة طوابق هذه عشرين وهذه ثلاثة والثلاثة هي ثلاثة فأصبح هم صاحب الثلاثة أن يهدم العشرين هدمت العشرين هل هذه الثلاثة ستصبح أربعة خمسة ست طوابق أم ستبقى ثلاثة طوابق فالصغير صغير ولو مات الكبير هذا المثال سعيك في هدم الكبير لا يجعلك كبيرا فإن لم تكن كبيرا بنفسك وتبني بنيانك بنفسك طابقا فطابق بالعلم فلا تنتظر أن يهدم غيرك حتى ترتفع تقى صغيرا ولو مات الكبراء And then the sixth reason which he mentioned is the sixth reason which causes people to show envy and become jealous over each other is desiring and loving a riasa, authority or status. And uh, the fifth the, the, the fifth The fifth uh, cause is when people are competing against each other for the same objective. When people are competing with each other for the same objective. And this could be in knowledge. So for example, two students of knowledge and they are competing with each other. That who is the first in the class? Who has the better grades? And then this causes jealousy between both of them. And also, when it comes to skills or careers or businesses, and they are competing with each other, who has more and who is better, who is more successful, and this causes jealousy. And this competing with each other, which results in jealousy, this could be over a worldly related matter or something regarding the akhirah. And then the sixth cause of jealousy is the love of authority or desiring authority. And this is the main cause and the most dangerous cause of jealousy. That a person wants to become a leader and he wants to eclipse everybody else. He can only gain leadership or authority by destroying everybody else who is around him. And this wretched person should be wept over. And let me give you an example. If this is a building, and this building has 20 stories, 20 floors. This building has 20 floors. If by its side is another building, and this building only has three stories or three floors. The one who has a building consisting of three stories, if he destroys this building, which has 20 stories, the building which has three stories, does it automatically gain a fourth story because he destroyed the one which has 20 stories? Or a fifth or a sixth? No. It remains as three stories. Three flaws, regardless of how much he destroyed. So the one who is low and little remains little, even if those who are great and big, if they die. And therefore, you spending all your energy in destroying those who are around you who are greater than you will not make you any greater. Because the one who is less and little remains little. Even if those who are around him who are greater than him die. And so build your own self. Build your own building. Increase the flaws and the story in your building. Through knowledge and learning. Level by level. Floor by floor. And you will become greater. 
as for seeking greatness through the destruction of others, then that person remains little and less and small. Even if those who are greater than him, they, they die. آخر سبب من الأسباب التي ذكرها الإمام الغزالي خبث النفس وشحها بالخير لعباد الله بعض الناس لا يتمنى خيرا لأحد همه نفسه فإن رأى خيرا في غيره أصابه الحقد وأصابه الحسد يتمنى وحده أن يكون غنيا يتمنى وحده أن يكون ذا مال وذا جاه وذا سلطان وذا ولد وهذا سبب خطير نسأل الله السلامة والمعافاة And then the seventh cause which he mentioned is evil and greed which is found within a person such that he does not desire for anybody else to have any goodness. His only desire and focus is his own self and he's not pleased with seeing anybody else being bestowed with any type of goodness and so he develops within him spite, malice, envy and jealousy. He only wants his own self to be wealthy and to attain wealth or possessions or to have a status amongst the people or to be a leader amongst the people or to be bestowed with children. And this evil and greed which is found within him, it causes him to be spiteful and jealous. And this is a dangerous cause. We ask Allah for safety and pardoning. بقي الكثير والموضوع لا زال في بدايته بقي أن أتكلم مثلا عن الوسائل المعينة على ترك الحسد وبقي أن أتكلم عن كيف أدفع شر الحاسد وبقي أن أتكلم عن كيف هي النماذج التي كانت في دفع الحسد والتعامل معه بقي كيف وصف البلغاء والحكماء الحسد بقي كيف ذكر الشعراء الحسد بقي ماذا بقي بقي الكثير ولذلك الوقت ضيق ومن أحب أن يتوسع فليرجع بقي الدقائق نفتحها إن شاء الله للسؤال والجواب وأول سؤال سيكون ذكرتم الإمام الغزالية آه وذكرت إحياء علوم الدين فهل تنصح بقراءة كتبه وقراءة ذلك الكتاب هذا نجيب عنه بعد الترجمة إن شاء الله And there is much that remains which needs to be said regarding jealousy And our lecture, our subject, our subject it still remains in its early stages. For example, I want to talk about the means by which a person can save himself from jealousy, meaning becoming jealous, and how a person protects himself from the evil of those who are jealous. And also examples and stories of how the early righteous people, how they dealt with jealousy. And how the intellectuals and the wise men, how they describe jealousy. And how the poets described jealousy. However, the time is short. And there's a few minutes which remain. And we're going to take these minutes in answering questions which you have. And the first question which we will answer is this question that you mentioned and you cited Al-Ghazali and you cited his book Ihya Ulum ad -Din. So do you advise us to read this book? Al-Jawabu an hadha al-Sual naqool 
كتاب احياء الدين كتاب انتشر بين الناس من قديم الزمان وفيه وفيه كما يقولون فيه اشياء طيبه لا شك فيها فيها اشياء مشكله لا شك فيها ولذلك نحن لا ننصح لعامة الناس أن يقرأوا هذا الكتاب دون تحقيق ودون تمحيص لكثرة ما في هذا الكتاب من أحاديث موضوعة مكذوبة على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ولذلك الأفضل كي تستفيد من الكتاب أن تقرأ مختصر من هاج القاصدين أن تقرأ كتاب مختصر من هاج القاصدين للمقدسي رحمه الله ومن هاج القاصدين لابن الجوزي وعند شيخنا الشيخ علي الحلبي رحمه الله لخص المختصر وسماه المنتقى النفيس في تلخيص اختصار علوم الحديث من هاج القاصدين وإذا أحببت أن تقرأ كتابا لجمال الدين القاسم رحمه الله وهو قرة عيون المتقين أيضا هذا فأنت تأخذ الثمر من الكتاب وهو مفيد في باب في بابه تأخذ الثمرة وتستفيد منها إن شاء الله بعيدا عن بعض الإشكالات العقدية أو بعض الإشكالات الفكرية أو الروايات والأحاديث الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله هيا على الصلاة هيا على الصلاة هيا على الفلاح هيا على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله So with regards to this question we say that this book Ihya Ulum al-Din is a book which has become widespread amongst the people for a long time and it contains and it contains meaning there are many good aspects to this book which cannot be denied. And there are also many mistakes and problematic issues in this, in this book which cannot be denied. And for this reason, we do not advise a person to read this book without having the ability to check and verify. Because this book contains many hadith or narrations which have been fabricated upon the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so whoever wants to benefit from the contents of this book, then I advise them with a book Mukhtasar Min Hajj Al-Qasideen of Al-Maqdisi. And as a side point, this book has been translated into English. And in this book, the author, Al-Maqdisi, he summarized Ihya Ulum al without the mentioning of the errors in Aqeedah, and the narrations which have been narrated. And also the book Minhaj al Qasidin of Ibn al Jawzi. And whoever wants to take the most poignant benefits from this book, then he can read the book by Shaykh Ali al Halabi called Al Muntaqa al Nafis. And again, he summarized the poignant points of benefit. And also the book by Jamal al-Din al-Qasimi. Qurratu Uyun al-Muwahideen. Again, in which he summarized the most uh, 
poignant points of benefit and removed the errors in aqeedah and those narrations which have been narrated. Please, if you want to have a question, this time we're going to make it more to the microphones. If you have a question, it has to be about the hasad, the envy, the evil eye if you want. So anything to do with the hasad, put your finger up and we will give it to you. Muhammad Gambit, tafadal. Turn it to him, please. If two people are doing a certain job, one person realizes that the shoe has been missing, and then he then realize, he then has an ill effect on him, i.e., um, um, like a bodily harm, and he thinks that is to do with hasad or envy. What would you recommend as the cure for that? So you can two translate. People the same job. <laughs> so two people are doing the same job, um, and then one of the persons realizes that um, the, the, the shoe is missing. Shoe. A pair of shoe. The pair of shoe. Yeah. The pair of shoe. And then it realizes as soon as that's gone missing, started to feel um, ill effects, body harm, you know, diseases, and they think that it's to do with the shoe. So they don't, they haven't seen that other person. What would be the recommended cure for it, if there's any? نعم يعني قد الحسد يعني يقول عليه الصلاة والسلام عامة القبور أو أهل المقابر من النظرة عامة أهل المقابر من النظرة سألت كنت مدرسا قبل سنوات في جامعة تبوك فسألت أخا سوريا مختصا في الرقية من سنوات طويلة خبير سألته عن هذا الحديث وهو من الخبراء قلت له من تجربتك كيف تفسر هذا الحديث قال لي صدقني من تجربتي أن كثيرا من حالات الوفاة سببها الحسد والعين ومن ذلك قد تكون أوجاعا قد تكون أسقاما فعامة وأحيانا قد يصاب بالسرطان بسبب العين وقد يصاب بالكساح والعين حق كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام وأدخل ما يدخل ويكثر ذلك كما ترى ولكن ربما نحن نقول استعن بالله هذا الذي كنا سندرسه لكن ضاق بين الوقت فكنت سأتكلم عن هذا كيف أستطيع أن أحمي نفسي من الحسد وكيف أتجنب الحسد لكن ما استطعت أن أشرح تفضل With regards to the question in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said that many of those people who have died die because of an evil eye or the evil eye and this is a hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that many deaths are caused due to an evil jealous eye and I personally when I was a teacher many years ago in the University of Tabuk I asked a Syrian brother who was well experienced in a ruqya and I asked him that from your experience how do you explain this hadith? And he replied by saying that believe me when I say that many of the deaths which I have come across are due to jealousy and an evil eye. Ain. And so illnesses are caused by jealousy and evil eye. And even many pains can be caused, physical pains can be caused due to this. And colds or viruses and flus can be caused and even cancer 
can be caused by an evil eye of jealousy. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he said, verily the evil eye, it is a reality. And so perhaps this may be a cause. But we say, ask your Lord for protection. And this was the exact topic that I was going to talk about. But the time was restricted. How a person can protect himself from jealousy and how a person can cure himself from being affected with jealousy. What do you say about wearing the clothes, jewelry in case of hasad? What do you say about wearing the clothes, jewelry in case of hasad? يعني خوفا من الحسد ما الذي يفعله الشخص هذا الذي كنت سأشرحه ولم أشرحه so this very question I was going to answer in my lecture but the time became restricted الأصل أن ألبس دون تكلف وأن أتزين دون تكلف ثم بعد ذلك أتوكل على الله إخواني المواظبة على أذكار الصباح على أذكار المساء حينما أدخل إلى البيت أقول بسم الله حينما أخرج من البيت بسم الله أدخل المسجد بسم الله حينما ألبس أقول بسم الله دائما أستعين بالله هذه تخفف كثيرا من أثر العين ومن أثر الحسد وللعلم ليس كل حسد عين وليس كل عين حسد فقد يصيب الإنسان نفسه بنفسه قد ينظر بالمرآة آه يا سلام فيصاب بعينه أصاب نفسه وقد يصيب ولده وقد يصيب زوجه وقد يصيب سيارته وهو لا يدري فليس كل عين حسد وليس كل حسد عين وقد تجتمع نعم with regards to clothing and jewelry the base ruling is that a person should wear beautiful clothes but without being extravagant and exaggerating or extreme and also a person should wear or a person can wear nice jewelry but without going to extremes and exaggerating or being extravagant and then a person places his tawakkul his reliance and his dependence upon Allah and also brothers and sisters being consistent upon the adhkar of the morning and the evening and mentioning the name of Allah when you enter your house and you leave the house and when you enter the masjid mentioning the name of Allah and when you wear new clothes you mention the name of Allah and always seeking aid and help from Allah this will reduce the effect of the evil eye and we should also know that it's not the case that in every instance jealousy causes the evil eye or the evil eye in necessary causes jealousy and sometimes a person may harm his own self through his own jealousy. Like a person looks at the mirror and then he is amazed by his own self. And so he has caused the evil eye or jealousy upon his own self. Or a person, he may harm his own child. He himself may harm his own child or his wife or his car. And he does not realize that he has harmed them through his own jealousy or his own evil eye. So we have to understand that Ain is not always jealousy and jealousy is not always Ain and sometimes they can come together. Last question please from person who's got the microphone, yes? But next time please everybody call for the microphone and send it back here. It's not somebody takes the microphone, he has to take the question by himself. I have to point the one who's... So uh, in Ad Duha, um, the last ayah, I believe, um, which of the uh, the favors you should report your favors. How do we balance between 
report, I think it's Sheikh's probably answered in, in, in just now, um, reporting the favours but yet um, being conscious of the evil eye? I, th I think we've answered the question already, so. Please, and, and Michael, send the microphone here, please. Who's here from the front, front row? Is one already? Front row, who's closer? So closer, the one who's closer, I get it. Jazakumullah yeah. Sheikh. So uh, I just need uh, a clarification on uh, the first sin that was committed by Shaitan. First sin. No. Is he al Hasad or al Kibr? No. Ishtama al Kibr or al Hasad. Takabbara wa hasad. Naam. The first sin which was committed by shaitan was a combination of pride and arrogance and jealousy. So he had within him al-kibr and he became jealous. Subhanakallah wa bihamdika. Shudhan tastakhir. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. Qultum daqa bin al-waqt fama dhakart. وصف الشعراء الحسد قل الحمد لله كيف ترجيف الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله هيا على الصلاة هيا على الفلاة قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله